This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. I am on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking, so join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week's guest yacht is the second largest offering from the largest catamaran manufacturer in the world, the Lagoon 65. Today, we are going to review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels, do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say, Naval gaze at an innovation and or adjustment that might make life aboard a little easier. Have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables. And finally, we're going to give it a Dave score and compare the results with all our previously reviewed yachts. All this fun will be sandwiched between a wine pairing from the same region as the guest yacht and a look at a favorite sample of art from the same region. Yachts, waves, ideas, wine, and art. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes. So let's get going. Starting high above Vancouver, Canada, we fly east across North America and across the Atlantic to France's western shores in the home of Last Time's Yacht at the Naughty Tech Yards in Rockport. From here, we hop south down the coast and the yards of Lagoon. Finally, we head north again to the vineyards of this week's wine pairing, Chateau du Moulin Rouge Cru Bourgeois Supérieur. The story of Chateau du Moulin Rouge is one of family's passion for wine growing. No fewer than 13 generations have worked hard to grow the vines, to use the best possible winemaking methods, and to modernize these facilities. Created in the 18th century, the estate is in an exceptional location. The vines stretch over 27 hectares of beautiful gravelly rises with plenty of sunshine and a microclimate influenced by the close proximity of the Gironde estuary. At the present time, two generations, parents and their children, add their personal contributions, ideas and expertise to perpetuate the family heritage. They attach a great deal of importance to tradition, quality-oriented methods in the vineyard in much the same way as the great growths bordering on Chateau du Moulin Rouge. In 2015, the estate adopted the Bordeaux EMS, that's the Environmental Management System, and obtained Level 3 HEV, High Environmental Value Certification. Grapes are entirely harvested by hand at Chateau Moulin Rouge. More traditional and less brutal than mechanical harvesting, this means that the bunches are picked whole and unbruised. The wine starts out quite elegant and well structured on the palate, going on to display ripe tannin and a fine long aftertaste. It's a combination of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. Oh, that really is nice. Let's go have a look at that boat. Cheers. Looking at the uh, 65, uh, you know, again, once you stretch these out to these extreme lengths, the, uh, the previous kind of guppy-ish look of a stubby vessel becomes extremely elegant with those rounded curves. You really see the design come into its uh, full promise here. The, uh, the, the, the bows there are absolutely vertical. You can see that sculpted hull really has a great look. You've got that fabulous forward cockpit with, with access through the, uh, the saloon and an amazing upper fly bridge and fly lounge. I mean, the comfort that's offered by this vessel really is second to none. Moving into the numbers now, we're looking at new comparables, and this week we're looking at the Fountain Peugeot 67, 
the Lagoon 65, the Sunreef 70, and the Privilege 650. This is uh, some rarefied atmosphere we're in here. And you can see the general configurations all look uh, somewhat similar. Um, the Privilege 650 uh, probably cutting the most attractive profile there. As we move into the actual uh, cabin toppers, the, the uh, fly lounge, um, all of them are extraordinary. Here the uh, Privilege 650 is probably the smallest of the group uh, with the sunreef being a football field. Uh, Fountain Peugeot and uh, Lagoon 65 look about the same, but I mean, you're talking so much space, there's not a lot to choose from here. As we head into the saloon itself, again, these are just epic proportions. Now, once again, the privilege uh, would be the smallest here. Uh, the, the length of it, uh, fore aft, is, is certainly almost half of what the sunreef is. Um, the, I would say the Lagoon and the Fountain Peugeot look about the same, and their layouts are equally elegant. As we move into the uh, accommodations, I mean, this is where these boats are just staggering. Uh, with the Privilege 650, you've got that amazing forward um, berth under the, uh, the nacelle there. Um, some argue that it may not be comfortable, but <laughs> it sure looks comfortable. Uh, looking at the sunreef, um, just massive uh, space. Uh, in the owner's hull there, you can see the sheer size you've got. Um, and the hull width is probably, ironically here, probably the narrowest in the Lagoon 65, uh, with the, the largest looking to be the Fountain Peugeot 67. Um, but, you know, space is not at a premium in these. You've got all the space you can imagine. It's, it's bigger than a New York apartment. As we look at the actual numbers themselves here, you can look across the top line there. You've got, uh, again, base price. These are uh, at the time I'm producing this, so they could have changed. Actually, you know, some of them were gathered three months ago, four months ago. So uh, with the state of the world, these could be all over the place. But you get a sense of them in comparison to each other. So Lagoon 65 uh, appears to be the bargain. <laughs> at 1.825 million. Uh, the next one is going to be the Fountain Peugeot at 2.467, uh, followed by the Privilege. Uh, see, the only time I can imagine saying a Privilege is, is not the most expensive at 3.35. And the Sunreef 70, that uh, castle on floats at uh, 4.8 million. Uh, bear in mind that when we go on into the comparison to the pre-owned uh, yachts, we add 50% to this to get a sense of sail away price. Um, as we look across here, um, looking at the draft, uh, you're, you're the least on the lagoon at 1.5 meter. Displacement, uh, the lagoon you're looking at 48.8 uh, ton. Uh, the Fountain Peugeot at 35 ton, which, you know, in these categories isn't bad. Although, here's a surprise. The Sunreef 70 is 32.77 ton. And the Privilege, which so many people talk about being so heavy, is 29 ton. So, within this group, the Privilege is the lightweight of the bunch. Upwind sail area, um, your champion in this area is going to be your Sunreef at 280 square meters, uh, followed by the Lagoon at 268. Uh, and then you've got Privilege at 232 and uh, the Fountain Peugeot at 230. Again, I always choose the base offering sale package. If that's a self-tacker, of course, it, 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 it harms your uh, sail area over displacement numbers. Um, as opposed to a standard Genoa. Looking down here now uh, on the fuel tank capacity, uh, all of them are massive. Uh, however, one of the surprises here is that the Privilege has the, lar uh, has the, the largest, tied for the largest fuel capacity, 2,000 liters, along with the Sunreef. 
Um, and then on water, uh, again, you've got uh, Sunreef has the highest at 1600 liters and then the Privilege at 1300 liters. Um, moving now into the uh, specifics on the hull construction, the, the thing that surprises me here is that Lagoon is still using a balsa core. Now, there are those that argue balsa has its unique capabilities and is a valid uh, selection for a core material short of the issue that it can absorb water. Now, with today's laminate technologies, it could be ar argued that if you, you have water intrusion, you have a bigger issue than wet balsa. Um, but, you know, it, it is still something of a surprise that uh, Lagoon still uses uh, balsa. Uh, Fountain Peugeot is foam. Uh, Sun Reef, of course, is foam, and so is Privilege. As far as the actual materials and quality, um, honestly, I couldn't find anything on the Sun Reef. Um, uh, the overall, it, it, it looks like most of them are using a, a, a polyester. Um, but if you can correct me on that, I'd be happy. I'm going to chat with the Sun Reef people in a couple of weeks here and we'll see what happens there. Now, sail area over displacement or uh, power. Um, here we have a big surprise. The Sun Reef at 27.77 is the leader. The next surprise is the privilege at 24.98 isn't shabby. That's, that's 25 sail area over, over displacement. Uh, then you got Fountain at uh, 2185 and Lagoon at 20.4. And you, you'll, you'll regularly see Fountain among the big uh, production lines uh, has the best sale, or, sale area over displacement. Um, as we move into displacement uh, to hull length at the water line, um, here again the low number wins and Sun Reef is the winner at 107.77, followed by Privilege at 111.47, then again Fountain Peugeot at 132.1, and <laughs> our big lady, uh, the Lagoon 65, at 189.2. So if you're not surprised, uh, I am. Hopping on board, what would Sylvia say? Well, Sylvia would go berserk over this. I mean, it is a, it is a floating palace. Everything about this thing is elegant. Look at the, the teak decks here, uh, that immense uh, cockpit, the, the beautifully embedded uh, lighting. Everything is finished to a T. Even the steps are nice and thick teak. It looks so good. The table's a ginormous slab of teak. Again, I would put a high gloss onto that. Beautifully aft, beautiful aft settee uh, with the reversible backs on that. So you can swing your feet out over the, uh, the dinghy lift there and enjoy yourself. Um, beautiful outdoor kitchen with the, the full sinks. Now, walking into this massive saloon, this is a galley down which, you know, myself I prefer. I don't want to look at my dishes or feel guilty, which I will. Um, massive doors open up. Again, everything, the ceiling beautifully done, the indirect lighting, the quality of the upholstery heading down the stairs. I mean, look at those beautiful uh, backlit stairs and you move into this owner's hall. Oh my gosh, everything about it is staggering. Uh, there, there is nothing not to like about this uh, except the amount that you'll be motoring. Uh, but you've got great ventilation up there. You've got massive light, a beautiful, elegant settee backed by a stunning bookcase, all with indirect lighting. You move into this amazing uh, aft bathroom, double sinks, that beautiful marbleish uh, Corian they've got there, even into the shower, direct access to the back cockpit, leather inlays. Uh, beautiful separate uh, head area. Uh, I mean, again, there's, there's just nothing uh, lacking here as far as a home on the water goes. It's absolutely stunning. Moving up into your lounge, your, your saloon here, look at the beautiful um, 
different colored woods on that table, the elegant chrome stylized base, uh, the wall finishings up here in that darker uh, brown which matches with the table, which matches, you know, the light wood matches with the with some of the other finishings in the cabinetry, the beautiful uh, marbleish Corian, the leather inlays here at the nav station, a beautiful little bar area here. I, I mean, again, like, <laughs> what do you say? Let's head down and see what your guests are going to enjoy. Uh, I don't think you're going to get them off this boat, quite honestly. That may be a problem. Here, here is uh, one of the suites. Uh, you know, the, the soft fabrics on the walls, uh, the, the complete access, an easy entry. My little, uh, you know, uh, five foot nothing Irish mummy, uh, even at the end of her life, could have crawled into that bed uh, because there's steps up to it. Um, your, your beautiful closet space, of course they've got carpeting here. Now moving, here's your crew cabin because you got a 65 foot yacht, you're going to have a crew. Um, and I mean, nothing to, you're not going to have a, an unhappy crew here. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, again, they, they get their leather inlays too. Look at that beautiful soft finish in the surround of each of the bunks. They've got storage for books, storage on the other side. And now we move into the mess. Well, uh, let's head now to a little bit of navel gazing while we're talking about this. So in something this size, the thing I would love to see is exactly what Amel does. They're beautiful upper cupboards. Anywhere they have an upper cupboard, they have a pull-out shelf with a glass bottom. Now, again, my little Irish mother would have wept with joy at this because she could actually see what the heck was in that shelf. I think that is an absolute genius item that I'm stunned others have not liberated for their own designs. Okay, we're back into the galley. And what a galley it is, full-sized American fridge, beautiful uh, stovetop there, four burner, fabulous little uh, breakfast nook for the crew or for you if you're brave enough to take this all by yourself. Um, and of course you can leave the dishes undone. Uh, or you have the crew to do them, which is probably exactly what Sylvia would say. Uh, back out into the cockpit. Uh, I, again, just, just amazing. A, a beautiful, comfortable space. Um, now let's head through. Look how they've uh, even uh, encapsulated the compression post. It's done elegantly, beautifully. Um, you wine fridge there. Of course you're going to have a wine fridge. Um, and out into this forward cockpit. I mean, I love the Leopard forward cockpits, but this is next level. Uh, you got your beautiful nets there, your anchor chain is hidden below. Look at both those power furlers. Bless their hearts, they're right there with our friends at Privilege. Uh, so you're going to be push button sailing on this puppy just the way I would like to. Uh, what a comfortable spot, the ratchet up back on that uh, sun lounger there. Beautiful clear side decks, the uh, uh, inset. Uh, hatches, uh, nice bulwarks, and even the safety lines don't seem like death lines on this one. They seem high enough and more sturdy. Um, okay, let's get to the piece de resistance. Let's go upstairs all the way up. And here we have the spot where everybody's going to hang out. And, you know, what a beautiful view you've got up here. You've got, uh, obviously, on this one, bow thrusters which is exactly what you need. You know what I'd do with that. I'd be tying that together with my dock mate and my uh, two aft engines. Look at the size of these winches. And you have beautiful double helms. Now, the owner of this one obviously opted not to include furniture. He's got his own furniture he's gonna do here, but holy mackerel, the space you've got here. There's the wine bottles. Uh, you know, you've got, you could put a grill in there. Everything's here. It's absolutely stunning. And of course, uh, you've got your hard top, uh, your built-in um, sunshades. You can get your clears on there. Look at the inset in direct lighting, the beautiful skylights. Uh, again, I mean, what a stunning, stunning vessel. Okay, a little more navel gazing on this one. One thing I'm curious about is 
there's only one manufacturer that seems to have jumped on to the idea of a captive winch. And that is our friends over at Genoa in the 64 and now the 65, where they've got their uh, um, main sheet on a captive. Uh, it, with the style and size and power uh, and indeed reduced cost of the captive winches now, I'm surprised more um, manufacturers don't at least option it. We could get rid of the spaghetti and put a lot more push button control on it. Okay, back on to the um, fly lounge or the fly bridge in this case. Um, what a view. A complete view of your uh, both bows. Of course, on something like this, you've got your aft uh, CCTV, so you really don't need to peek over the back. But if you had to, you just run back there <laughs> and look over it. Having a look from the outside, look at that fabulous uh, swim platform. Just stunning. Uh, you've got your staples on there. Everything looks so elegant. Um, and it's, you know, again, it, these at 65 feet, the, the hull shape and everything actually morph into a really beautiful design. Okay, let's hop over to pre-owned comparables here. What in the world do you compare to this? Well, we're going to look at a Fountain Peugeot uh, Allegra, oh no, sorry, uh, yeah, Allegra um, 67. Uh, so our base price sale away of the Fountain Peugeot is about three million bucks US two nine five six nine eight six uh, We're looking here at a two-year-old um, Fountain Peugeot 67 3.1 million simoleons um, The fountain's going to be faster uh, but gosh, I, I I, I probably, well, this is a toss up, I have no idea. They're both fabulous boats. Um, that 67 is almost new and it's going to have toys on it that the owner put on. You're paying another 100 grand, maybe you negotiate them down. They're about six to one and a half a dozen the other. Up to you. Uh, next one, the Lagoon 620, the predecessor of the 65. Uh, we're looking here at two million dollars versus three million for a brand new um, 65. Now, uh, if this was a, well, it is a 2020, so it's going to have the option of the darker wood. Um, uh, to save a million bucks, I'd definitely do the, the 620 on this one. Uh, it was a nice design. It's not as refined as uh, the, um, the 65, but uh, it's darn close. Hopping over now to the um, Sunreef Supreme 68, a 2017 vessel. Uh, so we're looking uh, five years old here um, and you're asking 3.1. Oh, no, I'd be going with the brand new uh, uh, Lagoon. Uh, I can get service anywhere in the world. Uh, the, anybody can argue quality either way, uh, I'd probably do the Lagoon. Okay, uh, finally with the end of the catamarans here, here's a new one from my friend Dan at O Yachts, his O Yacht Class 6. Now this is a highly unique yacht with massive space inside and fully customizable. So this is a 2020, this gentleman is selling this so he can build a new O Yachts Class 6. Um, and uh, uh, they're asking two million uh, versus three million uh, for the uh, lagoon. Now, I know a little bit about this boat. Um, if if I was to build it brand new, I could get a front cockpit. I could even get a um, uh, a fly lounge. Um, uh, you can do just about anything you want and this thing will fly. Uh, you can get it with uh, dagger boards. Uh, Dan would recommend for somebody like me just go with the mini keels. Um, but this has a very unique spine uh, configuration on it. It almost looks like a trimaran but it's not and um, will do extremely well in heavy water and keep Sylvia happy. So probably I'd, uh, I, I might look at this and, and take half of that million delta and make the inside all fancy HH-like um, or uh, just order a brand new one from Dan. He's a tremendous guy and incredibly innovative. Okay, we're moving over into monohull heresy. Uh, so as you know, uh, to compare monohulls, I add 20% uh, in length 
um, just to give a, a fair equivalence of living space. So our first one here, we're looking at a 2016 CNB 76. So that's a, a six-year-old boat, um, massive boat, uh, 76 feet, two million bucks. Um, I, yeah, if I get away with the healing, which is going to be less on a boat like this, um, I, I, I might go for this, but that new 65 is awful nice. Next, the Oyster 825, an 82 foot Oyster. 2016, this thing is the Rolls Royce of monohulls and it's just gorgeous. And the price is $5,500,000. So unfortunately, as much as I lust after this machine, I'd be going for my uh, Lagoon. Uh, last but not least, uh, an, another CNB uh, 76. Um, and we're looking at uh, 2.5 on this one. Um, it's a year younger, so it's five years old. Uh, and uh, 2.5 versus 2.9, no, I'm sorry, the lagoon. So as we get bigger, it would seem that the catamarans become more attractive. Okay, moving into the Dave score. Where does this puppy land? Well, the Dave score isn't built for machines of this magnitude. Uh, you know, it's not made to consider massive yachts of this, of this uh, size. It's not made to consider small yachts because Sylvia wouldn't get on the small one and I couldn't afford the big one. And it's really not meant to consider extreme performance yachts such as an ORC. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. Uh, the, the, the scores here, you know, don't reflect the simple fact I could never buy this thing. Uh, so we're looking at um, a total score of 80, not a big surprise. Interior um, elegance is eight. It's, it's an elegant interior, only exceeded by the privilege, uh, which is the oyster of catamarans. Uh, the exterior, uh, eight, uh, very comfortable, very elegant looking. Um, the interior comfort, nine, absolutely spectacular. The exterior comfort, nine. Uh, the quality, nine, um, maybe an eight, now that I look at it. Uh, you know, it, it's not at the level of a, of a privilege, but it's very nice. I mean, they do a really good job on their big yachts. Um, the uh, performance, obviously six, probably five. Uh, lazy Sailor, seven. I mean, it all comes to that upper helm and you've got those uh, beautiful uh, electric furlers. Condo. 10. Hits it out of the park. How can you argue? Uh, geek score, 7. There's enough interesting things on this vessel that I'd, I'd, I'd give it a 7 on the geek score. Value for money, how, how do you rate that? I mean, it, 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 it's a lot of money, but it's a lot of yacht. So anyways, I gave it a 7, giving us a total of 80, putting it uh, behind the uh, Portofino which is the only affordable one to get up in the rarefied atmosphere of the Privilege 580. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. For our Art of the Region this week, we're looking to Mr. Vincent Van Gogh and Seascape at St. Marie's. The painting is currently located at the Van Gogh Museum. And Van Gogh painted it in 1888. It's oil on canvas and the period is post-impressionism modern art. We can tell that Van Gogh painted this view of the sea from the beach as grains of sand, believe it or not, have been found in the paint layers. It was done at the fishing village of Les saint Maurice de la Mer during a trip he took from Arles in the south of France. In addition to the blue and white that he brushed into the canvas with bold strokes, he used green and yellow for the waves. He applied these colors with a palette knife, neatly capturing the effect of the light through the waves. Van Gogh was enthusiastic about the colors of the Mediterranean Sea. He wrote that it has a color like mackerel in other worlds, changing you. Don't, uh, don't always know if it's green or purple. You don't always know if it's blue because a second layer, its changing reflections has taken on the pink of the gray hue. The bright red signature 
has been placed prominently in the foreground. It was intended as a red note in the green. Well, that's everything for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was an amazing yacht. You don't often get on board yachts of this size, and I do hope you enjoyed it. I know that Sylvia would be in like Flynn, especially given that you'd have crew supporting everything. Anyways, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.